when I was a little girl, and not the sophisticated woman that I currently am. And every Thanksgiving, Daddy would sit at the head of our table, and he would look across at Mama, and they used to smile at each other. They didn't think I saw him, but I did. Now, however, the spirit of Thanksgiving is tempered by the knowledge that my father has walked out, never to return. After all this time, my mother makes no effort to find a new love. Someone to take her in his arms, to look into her eyes and tell her she's the most beautiful woman in the world. That centerpiece gonna be ready by tomorrow? <laughs> Mama, what's happened to you? What are you talking about? He used to be so pretty. Things change. Mama, you'll never guess who's downstairs. Guess, the pastor. Wait, I did that wrong. <laughs> That good-looking, unmarried, no-girlfriend, Pastor? That's the one. Think you can stall him while I fix Mama up? Okay, but I don't have all day. People say God looks out for the working man. Sure hope he's looking out for me. These empty pockets need a helping hand. Kitchen tables full of family. Hey, Jane, how are you? Just fine, Pastor Wilson. Nice to see you. Ladies, this is my buddy, David Blackwing. <laughs> I don't mind. I've got a wooden white guy in my breakfast now. <laughs> oh, Mama, you have something in your hair. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you making the cushions for the church pews, Millicent. Hey, I appreciate the business. I can't believe this congregation's been sitting on those wooden benches all these years. Well, actually, our last pastor felt us sitting on wooden benches would keep us awake during the sermons. Well, did they? Nope. We just woke up with sore butts. <laughs> Can I encourage him? Could y'all find that fabric I needed? Yeah, I did. It's out in the truck. I'll get it for you. Thank you. So, tell me, Pastor, do you have something special planned for Thanksgiving? Hmm? Dorothy Jane, I'm sure that the pastor has had any number of invitations from any number of families who would love to have him grace their table at Thanksgiving. Oh, yes, I did. So he's not available. Actually, I didn't want to risk hurting anyone's feelings by choosing one family over the others. So I'm just going to stay at home, watch Macy's Parade, and wait for Underdog to come along. So you'll be all alone? All by yourself? Isn't that just terrible, Mama? The pastor's gonna be all by himself on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. You know, my mom is quite a wonderful cook. Dorothy Jane, shut up, would you? <laughs> you know, you're welcome to join us, Pastor. What time should I be here? I thought you were worried about hurting other families' feelings. They'll get over it. <laughs> Anything I can bring? Oh, no. I'll be cooking a big old 26-pound turkey. Yeah, we get a big turkey for Thanksgiving because we had peanut butter and jelly in October. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you spend $100 on groceries all at once at Berkey's Sack and Save, they throw in a big old turkey for free. Of course, normally we couldn't go on a $100 shopping spree, but just as turkey's a tradition at Thanksgiving, the peanut butter and jelly October's a tradition with us to work <laughs> We eat at five. Come early. Well, I'll be here right after Underdog. Oh, this is perfect. Mama's got herself a date for Thanksgiving, and I did it. Nice work. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Mom, I'm driving. Chuck, you really promised you'd get out from behind the wheel of that pickup right now. It's my truck. <laughs> Chucky Lee? In the 
world do you think you're doing? Did you see me drive? Yes, I did. I didn't want to. He made me. <laughs> My child is eight years old. I didn't plan on him driving a truck till he was 11. I'm sorry. I'm just used to kids driving out on the reservation. You live on the reservation? Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I overreacted. Maybe. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. My daughter and I will probably just spend the day watching football and ordering Chinese. Ooh, you ordering Chinese food? That's no way to spend Thanksgiving. Actually, it's not a big Indian holiday. You know, it's supposed to be a going away party for you people. But you never went away. So you don't celebrate? Not yet. <laughs> We're not going to wear that. What's wrong with it? It's from the Millicent Torkels and Dowdy collection. <laughs> what is it you think I should wear? I think you should wear one of those lovely Jacqueline Smith sweater collection sweaters with the embroidered beadwork and the union label, which you could pick up at the Kmart in Vanita. Were you ever to actually purchase clothes from a place that sold clothes that actual people purchase? Well, some people can't afford brand name fashion designer sweaters. All right, all right. Let's see what you have here in the swamp you call a closet. Frumpy, 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 ugh. Why this sudden fashion critique on this particular day, my oldest one? For your own good. I just don't want you to be alone. <gasps> I am hardly alone, as you and your brothers and sisters noisily remind me of every moment of my life. Mama, tell me the truth. Do you plan on living the rest of your life without romance? Well, I don't plan on chasing after it, Dorothy Jane, if that's what you're asking me. I'm not saying chase after it, Mama. I'm just saying if it happens to walk in this house, you should be dressed for it. Now, this is a beautiful chiffon skirt. If you want to help, I could use you in the kitchen. We have a turkey in the oven and a table full of guests on the way. I am wearing this because it's the most comfortable thing I own. <laughs> Well, why do you think there's two forks? I think it's because I always drop one on the floor. And if you give everybody two forks, I won't just think you're doing this on account of me. You see right through me, don't you, Mary Sue? Well, you make it so easy. <laughs> Stephen Floyd, are you going to help out around here or are you going to read Batman? I think we all know the answer to that. All right, everybody, listen up. This is potentially a very important day in Mama's life. How come? When was the last time Mama invited a man over for dinner? When was the last time she went out with a man? How long can this continue? What are you asking me for? <laughs> now, Pastor Wilson is coming over, and we are going to make ourselves scarce. Because any man entering this house and being immediately confronted by five children would surely turn and run for his life. <laughs> Wait! Let us not trample the fragile soul of love! talking about? I got this fish on the hook and I'm the real man. Why don't you just say that? Now smile. Better. Hi, Pastor. Hey. Well, this is quite a greeting. Happy Thanksgiving. Come on in. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you. And listen, uh, now that we're all friends, why don't you all call me Langley? Oh, we'd be happy to. I believe Mother's in the kitchen, Langley. I thought I heard the doorbell. Hey, Pastor. We call him Langley. <laughs> These grow behind Fellowship Hall. Oh, thank you. Did you pick those yourself? Mm hmm He picked them himself. <laughs> Dorothy Jane, would you mind putting these in water? No, Mama. None of us would mind. <laughs> well... I hope you're hungry. Oh, yeah. Boy, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. You bet. Well, good. I'll get it. No. Oh. And I really appreciate you inviting me over, Melissa. It makes me feel very special to be part of your family like this. 
What, did you just invite anybody? <laughs> In the spirit of the holiday, back at you, Wasichu. <laughs> Wasichu, is that your Indian name? No, it means white guy. <laughs> yeah, like I'm a white guy. And this must be Jenny. Hey. Hi, we brought dessert. Oh, pumpkin pie. Do you already have one? I do now. Thank you. <laughs> Up. Yes, you are. Got on my tie. Yes, you do. What's my date? Jenny, this is Dorothy Jane and Patrick Swayze. I'm not really Patrick Swayze. I love Patrick Swayze. I'm Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Hi. Mama, can I talk to you? No, listen, is there anything we can help you with? Anything you need, we're completely at your service. Hey, guys, football game's on. <laughs> Go on. Mama? So, your dad lets you drive. He lets me steer. Does your mom let you drive? Oh, yeah. All the time. I'm uh, thinking about a Range Rover. It was supposed to be just you and Langley. You had a date with the pastor. Mrs. Torkelson, I believe I've made a mess of your yam. What are you talking about? I didn't have any date. I think what happened was it didn't drain off the juice. Yes, you did. I set you up. What are you babbling about? I'm saying I keep mashing them, but it doesn't do any good. They're already mushy. I thought you'd invite Langley over here. He would have been here the whole day, just the two of you alone, and now you ruined it. I just naturally assumed the juice stayed with the yams. Mr. Hodges... These are the most beautiful yams I've ever seen in my entire Thanksgiving career. I don't think you mean that. I could better serve you by watching football. Well, he killed these. Dorothy Jane, I assure you, I did not invite the pastor over here with Dayton on my mind. It is Thanksgiving and I invited over our new friends. You invited Langley over here and then you got scared, so you invited Dayton. And what exactly am I scared of, Doctor? You're scared that you've got five children and no one's ever going to love you again. Would you please go in the living room and be 14? Why don't you look in a mirror once in a while? Maybe you'll remember how beautiful you are. I don't have time for this right now. You don't have time for anything, Mama. You don't have time to do your makeup right. You don't have time to put up your hair. You don't have time to put on that beautiful chiffon skirt I picked out for you. I certainly don't have time to listen to this. Well, at least put on a pretty apron. At least then you'll have a waist. Here, just let me get this Dorothy Jane, off. would you back off? I am trying let to get dinner on the trying to help. I don't need your help. Now get out of my kitchen. out here, Dorothy Jane? Freezing. Well, you're gonna stay out here. At least wear my jacket. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, if you're gonna wear my jacket, you gotta tell me what's wrong. Everything. Seems to me, from what I've managed over here, that you've been working mighty hard on your mother's behalf and I'm not so sure that she fully appreciates your efforts. I don't think she does either. Mm -hmm. You know, you've never really seen my mother done up in beautiful, Mr. Hodges. Well, now I see your mother every day. And she appears quite beautiful to me. All I said was, if she doesn't take care of herself, she'd never have any romance in her life again. I'm just trying to help her and she won't listen to me. I imagine that's very frustrating. Yes, it is. Dorothy Jane, can I ask you to do me a favor? Would you go on over to your mother's garden and get those flowers to bloom for me? You're trying to make some kind of point, aren't you, Mr. Hodges? Bear with me. I pay my rent. Okay. What do you want me to do? Go on over there and water that garden and tell those flowers to bloom and see what happens. Okay, and let's assume I've done that. And now what effect did you have? 
None. Is the point coming soon? Dorothy Jane, you can no more push your mother into being ready for romance than you can demand that those flowers bloom. Or get an old cuss like me to make my point any more quickly than I want to. They are pretty flowers when they come up. And I'm sure they're worth waiting for. Anything I can do to help? Oh, no, everything's under control. I can handle this by myself. Well, why don't you let me give you a little help with the turkey? No, no, you know what they say about too many cooks. <laughs> Just you and me. Yeah, well, so it is. Oh, the turkey's ready. Oh, here, well, let me do that. Woo, that looks good. You know, when I was a kid growing up, my whole family used to come for Thanksgiving. You know, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents. And we'd gather around the table, and I'd be right there in the middle of them all. Boy, I hated Thanksgiving. <laughs> but today, <clears throat> I'm surrounded by family again. And I gotta say, uh, I don't hate it. Anything I can do to help? No. Uh, well, you know what they say about too many cooks. You know, they ought to do this Thanksgiving thing every year. I like it. The smells, the food, the company. I appreciate you inviting me into your home, Millicent. You want to help put these on the yam? Do you think you can do that, bud? Uh, can do. It's a real man's job. <laughs> That was all my fault. No, I'm sorry. Although it was his fault. Oh, boy, look at me. I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm sorry. I dropped the jello. I lost my temper and Mr. Hodges ruined those yams. Not much of a Thanksgiving. What are you sorry for? What happened to your dress? Well, I was in the kitchen fixing dinner when Langley and Dave came in. And all of a sudden, I had men on either side of me. I was surrounded and, and I got scared and... <laughs> I have five children, and it's like this is all new to me again. Oh, forget it. I'm not talking about this with my 14-year-old daughter. Why not? Because I am the mother, and you are the daughter, and I should be helping you with your problems. Now, how fair is that? Oh, no! What are you asking me for? Can't you see I'm an emotional train wreck? Why? Because you were right. Because you said I was scared, and I am. I have been a mother. For so long, I, I forgot how to be anything else. I forgot how to be a, a woman. Mama, you are a beautiful woman. In a frumpy dress covered with cranberry sauce. <laughs> You're probably going to cry now, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sorry I made you invite Langley over here. I'm sorry you have these guys downstairs oh. making you forget how to be a woman. I'm sorry I forget how to be a woman, too. <laughs> <laughs> Equin stays healthy. The Cowboys have definitely got a shot at the playoffs. Chicago Bears. Kid of life. Well, that's another conversation. <laughs> Where's Mama? I'm starving. Jenny, you can sit next to me. If that's right with you, sir. That's okay. You're a fine young man. And a heck of a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, sir. You know, he doesn't say that to just anybody. Good, good. <laughs> Mrs. Torkelson. Mama. Well, it was all laid out. So beautiful. So do you, Mrs. Torkelson. Thank you. Before we eat, I'd like to welcome y'all to our table. It's our family's tradition to say a word of thanks. And Langley, I know you're off duty, but would you mind saying the Thanksgiving prayer this year, seeing as how you're the professional? I'd be honored. We give thanks today for new friends and this wonderful meal. The yams will be better next year. <laughs> and we are especially thankful for this time where we can celebrate the importance of family and all that it means to be a part of a family. How a family cares for each other, supports each other, and most of all, understands each other just because they are family. Amen. 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 Let's eat. Yeah. How about some yams? No. No. I had a great time, Millicent. Thank you. We appreciate your hospitality. We had a wonderful time. Well, we certainly enjoyed your company. Well, I hope we can do it again next year. Well, I hope you come back before then. Good night. Good night. Good night.